Hello and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. Uh, my name is Babak, I'm your host. Uh, in this tutorial and in the continuation of the variable refrigeration flow system in the HVAC industry, uh, and as we discussed in the previous tutorial, we're going to uh, touch on how the VRF system works. Um, there is some background uh, you know, information. Um, you know, we have to flash back to um, thermodynamic, if you remember, uh, from your university courses. Um, uh, we have to review uh, some of the fundamentals about the heat pump and uh, vapor compression uh, cycle in the refrigeration system. So if you remember from your thermodynamic course um, in a vapor compression system, you have four uh, major elements. You have uh, evaporator, you have a condenser, compressor, and expansion valve. And if you look at this diagram, the, this diagram shows the, uh, the flow and orientation of the refrigeration movement in a circuit where uh, on the right hand side you can see the diagram and the vapor compression cycle um, you know diagram where uh, where there is uh, a different uh, phases uh, that are named from number one to number four so uh, you have your refrigerant that comes out of the evaporator in form of uh, a low pressure gas and then it enters into the compressor uh, the low pressure gas turns into high pressure gas and it gets into condenser on the point uh, end of point two and then high pressure gas turns into uh, high pressure liquid uh, where uh, the heat is rejected to the atmosphere uh, because you have a condenser here so this can be either in form of uh, air source condenser or it can be a water cooled type condenser where the heat is rejected to the fluid or water or glycol or whatever other fluid that uh, you have considered in your design. That's not uh, something we want to focus in this tutorial. Uh, so on the phase three, when you get out of the condenser, you have um, high pressure liquid uh, and it needs to lose its pressure to expansion valve where the um, you know, liquid loses its pressure and uh, there is a, a combination of phases between the vapor and the liquid and the low pressure uh, gas, low pressure liquid is created. And then we get into the phase four where you have your low, low pressure liquid get into your evaporator and turns into a low pressure gas. And in the evaporator, as you see, you have to absorb the heat from your environment uh, in the evaporator and this is uh, where the evaporator plays the role of AC unit in your indoor unit. So I'm not going to go get into detail on this cycle anymore um, because we are reviewing the VRF system and we talked about the VRF uh, technology where you can either have the heating or cooling from your refrigeration cycle. We need to look at the, the schematic below. Um, on how the refrigeration cycle works in either heating and cooling mode, mode of operation. If you look at the left hand side, that's exactly identical with what I explained above in terms of the evaporator being your AC unit on the inside of your room and outdoor unit will be your condenser. In this case, we, we can call it an air cooled condenser and the heat rejected to outside. And the, and the flow of refrigerant in this case is uh, counterclockwise from right to the left. If you see, there is a very minor difference between the other, uh, other schematic you saw on the top and the bottom schematic. The difference is basically is an additional component is added to the heat pump system. And that's a reversing valve. This is basically for the purpose of reversing the refrigerant flow direction. You can go either uh, counterclockwise for the, uh, you know, for the evaporator being your, um, you know, cooling for the indoor, and you can go refrigerant movement on the clockwise, as you can see on the right hand side of the refrigeration flow cycle. And in this case, uh, your 
indoor room unit, um, you know, becomes your condenser and basically you use uh, your uh, total refrigeration cycle for the heating purpose and uh, condenser room unit becomes your condenser and the evaporator unit uh, which rejects the heat uh, uh, which uh, sorry absorbs the heat is your outdoor unit so uh, so the reversing valve basically uh, is going to reverse the refrigeration flow um, from one direction to another based on the demand so that's basically the high level uh, concept on how the refrigeration cycle works in the heat pump system and in our case of the VRF we want to look at the piping arrangement and what kind of arrangement of the VRF system we have so if you remember in the heat recovery method which was one of the type and options of the VRF system we said that there is a possibility where you can either cool or heat the interior spaces with your similar, with your same VRF system. So if you look at the left hand side diagram here, I'm just going to increase the size here. Where do you see all the blue uh, uh, squares? These are basically the cassette unit that are providing cooling to your interior space and uh, um, you know and the brown uh, cassette units these are representative of um, you know heating units and these are all happening concurrently as you can see so there are four different pipe color arrangement here as it's shown it's basically the mixed phase refrigerant you have a liquid line refrigerant high gas line and suction line and each of these are corresponding to one of the uh, one of the phases uh, that was explained above so when you have a liquid line uh, it means that you have had your uh, you have had your uh, refrigerant past you have had your refrigerant past your condenser and it has become uh, the liquid liquid form high pressure liquid form so in this case as you can see the liquid line are shown with this uh, with this kind of green color here so remember that uh, in the in the heating mode of operation what you need to do is to run your hot gas into your uh, cassette indoor unit because this is acting as your condenser and then it rejects the heat to your environment or the room and then the refrigerant becomes liquid high pressure liquid and comes back to your distribution refrigeration distribution device as you can see with this uh, uh, yellow rectangle shape uh, you know symbol so the refrigerant comes back to to this in a form of a you know high pressure liquid so the cassette unit acts as condenser but when it comes to the cooling you have uh, you have your uh, liquid line comes to your uh, cassette unit so let's go back to the schematic on the evaporator side your uh, low pressure liquid low pressure liquid comes into your evaporator and turns into low pressure gas and exits from your evaporator so in our case in that schematic it was uh, called as a suction line so between line four and line one so going back to the schematic here as you can see <clears throat> you have the suction line is where your uh, refrigerant comes out of your um, evaporator here and when it enters into evaporator it's called the liquid line so it changes the phase here and turns into a uh, low pressure gas so so you you then eject uh, uh, you uh, absorb the heat from the surrounding in the room and uh, low pressure gas comes back to your uh, refrigeration distribution device so the refrigeration distribution device is where 
there are a combination of uh, refrigerant in various phases are combined and redirected to different uh, cassette indoor unit to provide either heating and cooling. And all of this mixture are happening in this refrigeration central box uh, in this type of arrangement. In the other arrangement, as you can see, still you provide heating and cooling concurrently, but your refrigeration distribution device are uh, you know, specific to that indoor unit. So you have three lines connected to your condenser, uh, which is the suction line, hot gas line, and also the uh, liquid line. So there are three pipes connected to your condenser and then the indoor units have their own refrigeration um, you know, distribution device that are tapped to either of these three lines. In the third piping arrangement option for the VRF system, you still have the three separate lines as we discussed in the second option with the difference that the uh, refrigeration distribution device is connected to multiple head ends inside the units. So that's what uh, that's what's uh, uh, sized and uh, designed. So you don't have as many um, distribution devices as you saw in the option two. There are much less than distribution device, but they are connected to multiple heads uh, and not dedicated to each individual. So this is a different type of arrangement. So as you can see, there are three different type of arrangement that are common in the HVAC industry. And in the future tutorial, we discuss about what are the best application for each of this type of options when it comes to your design strategy. What are the considerations you have to take into account if you want to go with each of this option uh, for your VRF system design. So having a look at, uh, having a look at uh, the pros and cons between the two pipe versus three pipe option. So the two pipe, as you can see, it's a good, um, you know, good option for the medium rise and wider buildings where you don't have a very tall buildings. And gas liquid separation is at refrigeration distribution device. Um, and also uh, you have a central distribution refrigeration device. In the two pipe, in the three pipe system, instead, uh, it's very good for the tall buildings, tall and scaling buildings, uh, so that you can dedicate refrigeration distribution device to each of this individual, um, you know, indoor unit, right? And you have a separated gas and liquid line. So because you have three separate lines, you can have a riser with different uh, three um, you know, refrigerant uh, at different phases. So this is a good application for the higher and uh, you know, smaller buildings, skinny buildings, um, which are not very wide, but they are much taller. So these are the better application for that purpose, option two and option three. So looking at some of the component of VRF system, we discussed about this in the previous tutorial. We have the indoor unit. In this case, this is a cassette style and it's installed uh, flashed with the ceiling, with our ceiling mounted. You have the refrigeration distribution device. As you can see, this is looking like a centralized distribution device that was explained in the option one. And you have this, um, you know, uh, individual a refrigerant distribution device that are dedicated to individual indoor unit as we discussed in the option two and option three and then you have the thermostat um, so as discussed the distribution device can receive the refrigerant in various phases it can receive it in superheat gas or subcooled liquid remember when you have the refrigerant coming out of your compressor, it is in the superheat, superheated gas condition. It's high pressure, uh, high pressure and gas and uh, superheated. And when it comes out of your condenser, it is in the subcooled liquid form. Uh, so your refrigeration distribution device receives the refrigerant in all these modes of uh, operation coming out of your indoor unit. 
and then redistribute it to other, other indoor units. So other, you can see in here other uh, form of indoor unit. Uh, you can have a wall mounted, you can have a ceiling mounted, like flashed with the ceiling, which is called the cassette type, or you can have the above ceiling uh, model, which you can connect to the dock work if you have like a space. You want to provide multiple duct and diffuser system. Uh, in that case, you can maybe use the above ceiling uh, mounted type uh, indoor unit. And for the outdoor unit, there are uh, this style unit and they have uh, multiple compressor and uh, these compressors have uh, inverter uh, driven compressor, which we'll discuss in the future tutorial. And um, the capacity of the indoor unit, which we need to look at is something between 7,500 uh, you know, BTU per hour all the way to 96,000 BTU per hour. So the 96,000 is correspond to eight ton cooling as a maximum that you can provide to each space. And on the condenser side of thing, uh, you can go, uh, you know, up to 456,000 BTU per hour. So this is a you know, good size, um, you know, cooling for a mid-rise uh, building. And, uh, and these are application for the mid-rise or low-rise um, buildings, the VRF system. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about some other design consideration and application of VRF system, type of compressor, what is the inverter-driven compressor, and what's its application. We're going to look at the noise and acoustical consideration in the VRF uh, design system and what are the, the noise coming out of this system and where uh, you can apply uh, you know, this system. Uh, we're going to look at the piping and flow and also what are the building height uh, considerations. So there are more videos for the VRF system design coming up. Uh, please stay tuned. Please don't forget to subscribe in this channel of the World of Building Design and press on the notification button to see the new tutorial as soon as they're posted. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.